San Diegans coming together to hold a vigil for the victims of this deadly crash in Imperial County. And the worst of the rain and wind today are hitting right now and for the next few hours. I'm pinpointing the rain, the wind, and the thunderstorm threat as we head into the afternoon. And hearing from victims uh, of Kellen Winslow Jr. ahead of the former NFL player sentencing. ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm Virginia Cha. The rain has arrived. Let's get to 10 News meteorologist Megan Perry. Megan, I would say outside the studio, it's pretty drizzly right now. Yeah, it's coming down pretty good outside of my window right now, and I'm enjoying listening to it. My plants are definitely enjoying soaking it up as well compared to how dry it has been so recently. But the rain is part of it. The wind is the other part. Look at the palm trees waving in Pacific Beach right now. Look at that guy just walking around. Of course, we love to be out in the rain. And our reporter, Steve Royce, out at Delmore Heights Road by the Five, raving the rainy conditions right now. Drive careful. These people are driving really fast right now. Remember to turn your lights on when it is raining so that other vehicles can see you coming. We're seeing widespread rain across the county. Some heavy showers falling down in parts of Tierra Santa, downtown, National City, Chula Vista. But the heaviest rain is up near Camp Pendleton right now. In fact, as I look at some of the rainfall totals for this red area right here, rainfall wrote, well, that's the road. <laughs> rainfall rates are coming down at over an inch per hour. That means that if that system were to sit there for an hour, we would get over an inch of rainfall. Luckily, it's not going to sit there for an hour. It's a very fast moving storm. We've seen quite a bit of lightning as well. Most of it has been offshore and hitting in Orange County. But here in San Diego, we have a beach hazard statement until 6 p.m. Remember, if you hear thunder or head indoors, it can be deadly. It's actually one of the most deadly things that we see, weather phenomenon we see every single year. The rain will continue for the next few hours, taper off a little bit, and then pick a up again this evening. I'll show you that and the wind and the mountain snow when I come back with your full forecast. Virginia? A lot to get through. Thank you, Megan. We are also waiting to see if this weather will impact the Petco Park vaccination site today. That site just reopened this morning after a supply shortage forced it to put things on pause. Thousands of appointments had to be rescheduled. Last month, strong winds upended tents and forced that site to shut down briefly. Other sites across the county are open. Well, this morning, the wait goes on for answers to some big questions surrounding the deadly crash in Imperial County. 13 people killed when an SUV carrying 25 people was broadsided by a big rig. Investigators still looking into the cause of the crash and whether human smuggling may have been involved. Meanwhile, here in San Diego, a human rights group expected to hold a vigil for the victims as a local memorial grows. ABC 10 News reporter Cassie Carlisle has details on that and the investigation. More than 24 hours after this tragic crash between an SUV and a big rig in El Centro killed 13 people, we learned the two patients transported to Scripps Mercy Hospital in San Diego are alive and still receiving treatment. Four patients were taken to UC San Diego Medical Center in Hillcrest. The maroon Ford SUV had only two front seats. The back of the car was stripped, carrying 25 people total during the crash. For perspective, the vehicle normally seats eight. Nobody knows the details just yet. At Chicano Park, San Diegans mourn the loss of those working toward a better life. Whether they're farm workers, whether they're immigrants, they're human beings. That's something we're sure of. And they should not have died such a horrific death because they wanted a better life. Enrique Marrones, executive director of Gente Unida, a human rights border coalition, placed candles and crosses at a growing memorial. The group hosts an event at Chicano Park every Wednesday, and today they are holding a moment of silence for the lives lost in the crash. The National Transportation Safety Board and ICE agents from San Diego are investigating the crash. The Mexican consulate confirmed 10 of the victims were Mexican nationals. Cassie Carlisle, ABC 10 News. Well, after several delays, former NFL player Kellen Winslow Jr. has been sentenced to 14 years in prison. ABC 10 News reporter Marie Cornell shows us what happened during the hearing. Via a virtual hearing, Kellen Winslow sat and listened to his victims and their families talk about how his actions have changed their lives forever. That man is not a good man. I don't think you know how truly dangerous this man is. Ever since I've been raped, I couldn't lift my head or take a couple steps. 
I felt trapped, worried, scared. I felt like I had no rights. I couldn't live my life at all. I was very worried about my safety. Wednesday, Winslow was sentenced to 14 years in prison, which was agreed upon by his attorney and the district attorney's office. Last month, Winslow Jr. withdrew his original plea and pleaded guilty to a lesser charge of assault with attempt to commit rape. It was in 2019 when Kellen Winslow Jr. was convicted of multiple charges, including forcible rape. But the jury deadlocked on some charges, which forced a retrial. But before that could happen, things took a surprise turn when Winslow agreed to plead guilty to charges of rape, indecent exposure, and lewd contact. During today's hearing, the son of San Diego Charger Hall of Fame receiver Kellen Winslow sat with the mask on, not making any obvious reactions to what he was hearing. When it was his lawyer's turn to speak, he argued the years of head trauma from playing football contributed to these events, adding he's looking forward to getting the medical treatment he needs. Marie Cornell, ABC 10 News. Well, in just the last 15 minutes, embattled New York Governor Andrew Cuomo addressed the allegations that have ignited a firestorm of controversy. In just the last week, three women have come forward accusing him of sexual harassment and unwanted advances. And after dodging cameras for a week, here's how he responded today. I now understand that I acted in a way that made people feel uncomfortable. It was unintentional, and I truly and deeply apologize for it. I feel awful about it, and frankly, I am embarrassed. Cuomo went on asking the citizens of New York to wait for the facts to come out from the state attorney general's review before forming an opinion. He was asked point blank if he is considering resignation. He repeated his apology to anyone he made uncomfortable but said he would not step down. Well, the CDC is working on updated guidance for people who have already received their shots. They are expected to lay out what vaccinated people should and should not do. There were reports the guidance will tell fully vaccinated people they can gather in small groups with others who are fully vaccinated. Other than that, the CDC is expected to continue recommending social distancing and wearing masks. We could learn more sometime this week. Meanwhile, an update on the relief bill making its way through Congress. Democrats reportedly agreeing to tighten qualifications for the next round of stimulus checks. That's according to the Associated Press, which also says the income level for full checks, individuals who make 75,000 a year or less, will be kept as is. What's reportedly changing is which people who make more than that will be eligible for partial checks, as with past relief bills. The AP reporting a revised bill would block anyone making more than 80000 a year from getting even a partial check.